The Grammar of Antiquity. The palace features tapered columns that are engaged into the wall where the room beams, now gone, occurred. Their tops or capitals imitate the blossoms of papyrus plants. The skyscraper in Chicago has thick brick walls which also support the roof and floors. It's devoid of all ornamentation but has the graceful taper of the papyrus column. Buildings are pyramids formed of isosceles triangles. The ancient example was built of almost solid massive limestone while the modern example is lightweight glass supported by a steel space frame. The temple in Luxor has columns supporting beams or lintels and his system is trabeation. In contrast, the temple in West Thebes uses common brick to form arches, the compression of which allow for spanning or bridging gaps when the material is smaller in scale. Compare large blocks of stone with standard bricks. This system is arcuation. The palace features limestone columns that have an unusual downward taper. In the Johnson Wax Building, the famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright employed a similar downward taper, but introduced steel-reinforced concrete, in which steel rods provide flexibility in the more brittle but durable poured concrete. Two types of domes are illustrated. A dome is an arch replicated through a full circle. Imagine spinning the arch 360 degrees. In the treasury, the dome consists of horizontal bands of limestone, while in the Pantheon, the, the same is a concrete shell that became thinner as it ascends. It has the notable opening or oculus at its peak, which is unglazed and admits not only light, but also rain. Here, the focus on the Pantheon in the right slide shows us the drawing called a section or slice through the building. It shows its profile and heights, in addition to showing that a perfect circle will fit into the interior space. Here, we see two types of arches. The earlier corbel arch, which consists of courses of stone, each of which extends farther than the one below it. Second, the true arch, which consists of wedge-shaped stones, of which the center, or keystone, locks the system in place. Here, we see three types or orders of columns. Doric, a simple saucer capital or top, finishes off a base-free, fluted, or channeled column. Second, Ionic, the scrolls of the column balance the base. And third, Corinthian, the capital consists of outward-turning acanthus leaves. We see the Temple of Poseidon, which is slightly earlier, and its columns are squatter and thicker. Two of the same buildings, let's focus on the Parthenon, perhaps the most famous Greek temple, which has slender columns that surround the building, making it peripteral. It includes optical effects, take a look at what your book says about this, that provide balance and equilibrium. In both cases, the wood roofs are long gone. Here, the capital on the lower left is not only an ionic capital, but also an angle capital, since at the corner there are scrolls on all four sides, and where they meet, they turn outward at a 45 degree angle. In the Erechtheum, the most famous feature are the Caryatids. Here we see two Roman temples that illustrate the strong inheritance of Greek principles. The floor plan is important to understand. Imagine slicing the building horizontally, that is parallel to the ground, and drawing everything visible from the slice downward. 
the country's third president, was also ambassador to France, and as an amateur architect, won the competition for the Virginia capital. He based it on the temple in southern France. What did he preserve from the antecedent, and what changes did he introduce? Hudson is the preeminent 19th century American architect and was considered a proto-modernist. Proto means first in Greek. We can see that he admired the aqueduct in southern France. What did he borrow from it for the store in Chicago? Not only the rock-faced stone and rows of arches, known as arcades, but also the multiplication of the rhythm of the arches on the top level. Two examples of the use of columns and arches. The columns and lintels overlay the arches, creating a dual language. A key concept is the ancient rule of superposed orders, that when there are columns on multiple levels, the first will be Doric, the second Ionic, and the third Corinthian. This rule persisted through 16th century Renaissance Venice, as illustrated by St. Mark's Library. The arch on the left is a triumphal arch, which almost always had a distinct set of proportions, a wide central section flanked by narrower side sections. The entrance to the treasury retains this proportional scheme and rhythm, but is carved from the monolithic stone of the hillside. Here we have illustrations of vaults, which consist of multiple connected arches. Picture half of a barrel set on its side. A vault like this is often called a barrel vault. Well, that's it for the ancient world. Let's now move on to the Gothic achievement.